and now restrict to get yellow sets. And that's a finite subcover, the original collection. Everybody happy with that? So this is a great time to ask questions. So consider an open cover V alpha K okay, in Y by uh, the theorem, uh, the earlier theorem. Uh, there exists um, u sub alpha such that u sub alpha intersect y equals v sub alpha, and these are open u sub alpha. Um, u sub alpha, oh, I said I would just, said I wouldn't write it, but I'm writing it. That's okay. These u sub, u sub alpha cover uh, k in x. So there exists a finite subcover, et cetera, et cetera. I guess I'll let you finish the, the argument. But now you want to, you, well, I'm almost done. I'm just going to write it down. <laughs> so there exists a finite subcover, uh, which we're going to call, help me, everybody should be able to do this now, u alpha 1 through u alpha n. Then, okay, this is enough for a sketch. V alpha 1 through V alpha n are a finite subcover of the V alpha for K in Y. Are we happy with that? Good enough uh, sketch of the argument. There are a few things to check. If somebody really pressed you, you might want to explain why this clearly still covers. Okay? But I'll let you worry about that. All right. Excellent. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story is compactness is an intrinsic property of a set. It doesn't depend on what metric space you're embedded in. Just got to be one that contains that set. Yes? Willing. Yes. It, it, yes. If you change the metric, then uh, then then all bets are off. Yeah, and that's because we're we're uh, always thinking of one metric space being embedded in another metric space and inheriting the same metric. Okay. Yeah. Excellent question. If you change the metric, you're actually changing this, the metric space. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. So um, let me write this down so it at least gets into your notes. Compactness is an intrinsic property of a set. That's really what we're trying to say. Uh, obviously, in some metric, in some space, but it's intrinsic. You can change the enlarge the metric space using the same metric, and it's still compact. OK, so now we're ready um, to prove some other things about compact sets. We still don't have many examples of compact sets, but we're, we're getting there. OK, uh, ultimately, we want to show that the interval, the closed interval that we encountered last time is compact, but we, we need some ingredients before we do that. Okay. So we've shown that compact sets are bounded. Uh, it's also the case that co compact sets are closed. Obviously, we're referring to some particular metric space being closed in a particular metric space. OK, so um, gee, why is this true? Why is this true? Let's draw some pictures to see if, if, we, if we buy that. Um, here is a, imagine the whole board is the metric space. And here is some set K. Oh, let's have a little more fun. Here is some set K. OK. And uh, it's a car. It's a compact car. Compact car. 
Uh, and I want to show that this set, compact sets, are closed. Okay, so here's K. Okay, now, how do I show that uh, this set is closed? What's one way I could try to do this? Hmm. Well, let's see. What does it mean to be closed? A set is closed if it contains all its limit points, or alternately, a set is closed if its complement is open. Which of, which of those characterizations do you think might be most helpful here? Complements are open. Why do you think that might be more helpful when you're dealing with a definition uh, like a com uh, com uh, uh, concept like compactness? It's talking about open covers. Okay, so let's try that strategy. I want to show the complement of K is open, yes? So, this is, this is one of the most fun proofs in this class. This is just so much fun, okay? So I, I want you to just be ready to appreciate this. Okay, here we go. We're going to take any point outside of this set and show that, what? There's a ball around it, a neighborhood around it, that misses the car. OK? That's our, that's our goal. So let's, uh, let's imagine that we have a point, P. How can I produce an open set that misses the car? And just, just for a little bit of comparison, we'll do a little scratch work here. I mean, you, you could imagine, for instance, another, another set um, like this. I mean, here's another set in the plane. Um, maybe, mm, yeah, you could imagine, uh, you know, another set that's like, really wild, perhaps, um, like this one. So this is like a, you know, a set that's sort of going off to infinity in both directions. And here's a point, right? This is not a bounded set. And so we know, since compact sets are bounded, this is not a compact set, right? That's an another kind of example we could be looking at. And this is, the, the, of course, the, the example we want to focus on. Uh, you could also imagine, for instance, a set that looks like it might be have no boundary and a point right that's not inside. And this clearly doesn't have a neighborhood, does it? OK. OK. Yes, Jenny? Oh, interesting. Interesting. OK. So Jenny, Jenny's saying somehow we want to use the fact that every open cover is a finite subcover. So we need an open cover of k, yes? OK. Uh, I want an open cover of k. And um, well, how could I do that? And then, of course, I, I need, I'm trying to produce an open a neighborhood around p that, that completely misses k. So how can I do that? Um, I like your idea, Jenny. So let's just see what, what could we do. Uh, would you agree that if k were a point, this would be easy? Yes, Maya, why? OK, good. If I had a particular point over here, um, let's call it q. Would you agree it would be very easy? Let's make even Q a little more, a little farther here, in fact. P and Q, you could find an open ball around P that completely misses Q. Would you agree? Yeah, it might be this one. Right? Uh, if this distance is 10, you might make this radius 5 just to be away from Q. Now, of course. Um, you, you, of course, you see this car here, and you're 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 worried, right? You're saying, "Gosh, no, it's that's it's too big." Okay, but 